we understand schematically how the visual mind works. So let's say that this circle represents our brain, our visual engine, and we're gonna divide it up into six slices because it turns out that the way vision actually works is dividing the world up into six different types of information. And one of those is going to be who and what, another one of those is gonna be how much, another one of those is going to be where, Another one is going to be, when does it happen? Does this not sound familiar? This is kind of the six W's all over again. Another one is how, and then we'll end up with why. And what our visual engine does is it looks at something, you know, we look at it, and then it says, okay, I'm looking for the people and the things, and then I'm gonna look for how many of them there are, and then I'm gonna look for their location, and then their sequence, and then sort of the flow of how do they work, and I'm gonna come up with a solution at the end. So all we do to be good visual thinkers is just draw our pictures around this circle. So when we talk about who, we're going to draw some little stick figures. If we talk about what, we're gonna draw like some little icons or something. And then we go into how much. Okay, so now we're going to draw ourselves a little chart that quantifies our numbers. And then we're gonna say, okay, so where are they? And this is how vision actually works. So to answer your question, you break your problem down by saying, any problem, our plate of spaghetti again, who and what's involved, how many are there, where are they, when do they happen, how do they work together, and why do I care? And you simply draw those six pictures in order and presto, you've clarified anything. What I love about this is that it's also a diagnostic. It can help you figure out if you're really working on a how much problem when you thought it was a different kind of problem. And isn't it always true that we think we're solving for one thing only to realize later on that we were looking at the wrong problem? This is, I like your word, the diagnostic that says we often think we're looking at a how much problem, but in fact, no, it's a location problem. And again, these are very conceptual, but the concepts are taking us back to this underlying building blocks of vision and visual problem solving. Dan, can we walk through a live example? Let's say you're a company that has a regional product okay. and you're thinking about expanding globally. How would you use this process to help you think through the choices? Okay, so you just start with those little six by six pictures we talked about. And the first one we're going to draw is just a picture of the who and the what. So we're going to say, you know, there's us and this is our company and we've got a certain number of customers that are out here, and maybe we've got some partners and some investors, what have you. So we've just quantified uh, who the people are. And then we might say, you know, that this is the product that we offer. So those are our who's and our what's. And now let's think about numbers. So maybe what we're saying is, if this is a little chart that represents number of customers we've had, we've kind of peaked. And what we need to do is look for some way to be able to get more customers, and our hypothesis is, well, let's go uh, more broadly. Let's go global from being regional. And from a map perspective, what we'd do is we'd say, okay, let's draw a little map here of, of the United States. Okay, there's the US and, and we're kind of a regional player over here. So one of the things we might wanna do from a where perspective is let's go ahead and go global. So let's go ahead and move from regional to a global player. And that gets us thinking, okay, so where on the planet would we want to go? Well, maybe we're more comfortable initially moving into Europe before we make maybe a big push into the Asian market. So now we can kind of map that out. And then we'd say, okay, so now what is the sequence of things that we need to do in order to make this happen? Well, the first thing we need to do, I guess, is identify where is X on the planet? Where do we want to go first? And then we'd say, what do we need to do to increase our ability to manufacture the product to meet that? And then what would we need to do in terms of market development in that place? So these are the sequence of things. And then that leads us to our flow chart. Now this is where things are getting complicated. So this is our product set today, and these are the people that we're offering it to. So what we want to do is maybe diversify the number of products to make sure that they're more locally uh, appealing. And we're then going to be able to increase massively the number of customers that we have. And by the way, in order to do this, we recognize that there is some complexity in making these things move. So let's make a note. This is something we need to do another circle about on its own. And then the why will bring it all the way back home is because it's going to make all of us a lot happier because we'll have vastly more customers than we ever had before. And there we've done it with our six little pictures, our one, our two, our three, four, five, six little pictures. We haven't solved it, but we've clarified exactly what we need to do. Makes that is sense? That is fantastic. What I love about it is that you have identified the pieces that we know and the pieces that we have to go and investigate. Can you go. really visualize Perfect. strategy? Is that possible? Do you have any yeah. examples about that? Uh, the best example ever. So we're going to talk here for a moment about uh, an airline. Okay, so two guys are sitting in a bar in Texas back in 1967, Herb and Rollin, and they've got this little cocktail napkin, 
and the two of them are talking about the realities of Texas. You know, it's a big state and they're business guys and you want to travel from Dallas over here to Houston, over here to San Antonio and they draw this triangle just connecting those three major cities of Texas and guess what? That's the original business plan of Southwest Airlines drawn by Roland King and Herb Kelleher on the back of the cocktail napkin, 1967, and the world's most successful airline is born off of that little picture. So by drawing out this triangle of these three cities, how did that clarify for them what kind of airline they wanted to create? At that time, imagine the whole United States is around here. And at that time, airlines had these hub and spoke systems that obligated them to make these very crazy routes to try to get from some place to another. And so what they said is these three cities are the three major parts of Texas. Wouldn't it be awesome if we created an airline that bypassed all of this chaos and just connected those three cities? And it was the simplicity of that thinking that was the breakthrough redefining how the airline industry worked.